front tonight, kids in court. It comes after a 12 year old was accused of shooting at the local deputies and, a, and appeared before a judge. This happened. This happened on Thursday, seven days ago, after police say a 12 year old kid and a 14 year old fired fired rounds at a at the police officers with illegal guns. So now he, this trouble accused of shooting is at the deputies and appears from the judge. So and I'm going to play you that tape. Been? Look, watch. Well, okay. Um, I'm Judge Orfinger, and I'm going to conduct your detention hearing this morning. Uh, the purpose of a detention hearing, sometimes we call them a first appearance, the purpose of a detention hearing is for me to determine whether there is probable cause that an act of juvenile delinquency occurred and that you are the person who committed that act of delinquency. And if I do find that there is probable cause that those offenses occurred um, or that an offense occurred, we then discuss whether uh, there is a basis to keep you detained or whether there is a basis uh, to release you, and if so, under what circumstances. Some things you need to know. First off, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you do say can be used against you. So he the was being court. reported. There is uh, an attorney from the state attorney's office here. And so if you say something, there won't be any question about whether you said it or who you said it to. Um, you also have the right to a lawyer at all stages of the proceeding. Now, um, this youth is uh, a, a ward of the Department of Children and Families. Is that correct, Ms. Marrero? Yes, Your Honor. He's committed to the department. Mr. Beckwith. Permanently, sir. All right. So I'm going to appoint uh, the Office of the Public Defender uh, to represent you today, sir. And uh, Ms. Hughes from the Public Defender's Office uh, is here. Uh, hopefully you see her on your screen. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Hughes. And I said there was an attorney from the state attorney's office. That is uh, Ms. DePaula. Uh, now, Mr. O'Brien, you are charged with armed burglary of a dwelling, structure, or conveyance. You're also, a char you're also charged with attempted first-degree murder of a law enforcement officer. Now, I've reviewed the arrest report. And based on my review, there is probable cause for the arrest, probable cause to believe that, uh, that these acts occurred and that you are the person who committed them. Ms. Uh, Hughes, do you have any argument on probable cause? Not as to probable cause, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Um, I reviewed the... Uh, uh, score sheet prepared by the Department of Juvenile Justice, the detention screening instrument. Um, you do score for continued secure detention, and I'm going to order that you be held uh, in secure detention for 21 days or until further order of the court. Um, At uh, this point, that is about all we can do for this morning, other than to set an arraignment date. Uh, this is going to be in Judge Gostad's division on the west side. Uh, do you want to set an arraignment date today, Ms. DePaula? Yes, Judge. If we could set something approximately three weeks away, close to that 21-day mark. Okay, the 21 days will run on June 23rd at 
5 p.m. Madam Clerk, what have we got? We can actually set that on June 23rd at 10.30 a.m. And Judge, would your honor agree to a secure detention review on the 9th, which is our next uh, uh, court date with Judge Gosted? Any objection, Ms. DePaula? Yes, Judge, we would object to that. He scores for secure detention, and the state needs time to be able to make a filing decision in this case. But the ninth is not going to be a sufficient amount of time for that to take place. With Your Honor, ultimately, we're not asking for an arraignment on the ninth. We wouldn't expect a filing decision. We're just asking for a secure detention review, given his age. Well, I don't see a basis to do a review. So we'll just leave his arraignment set for the 23rd. And I'm sorry, Madam Clerk, at what time? Uh, 1030, Your Honor. All right. And Your Honor, additionally, given his dependent status, would uh, you appoint the public defender beyond today's court date? I anticipate him receiving conflict counsel, so I would like to get the ball rolling on that. Um, if conflict counsel is going to be necessary, uh, you just need to file a uh, file a motion to withdraw based on the conflict, and Judge Goss said, will no doubt then appoint the Office of Regional Conflict Council. Correct, Your Honor. Okay. Is there anything further? They're not from the state, Judge. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. We'll move on to our next case. All right. So now, what we now know is that he's being held in detention for 21 days. So that's going to be until June 23rd. And at that time, we'll know if we've got special counseling. But what does the sheriff have to say about this? Coming up on Monday, we'll talk. We'll, we'll hear from we'll hear from the sheriff about what had happened during that shooting and. Give him, we'll hear from the sheriff and tell him, and he'll tell us his side of the story. And we wanted to see what would the sheriff say. But he, but he will speak out, and I'll, de I'll dedicate that half hour to the sheriff. I'll have that for you on Monday. Because I want to spend this half hour dealing with. Just this. Because we got other things to talk about here. Next, we're going to tell you about the safe place for troubled kids, and I do mean troubled kids. Also, we're going to be focusing on abusive husbands who tortured their wives. It's Risha Pomori. Stay tuned. Up front tonight, child abandonment. Child endangerment. What it basically means to leave a child in any place without providing reasonable and necessary care for the child in circumstances under which no reasonable similarly situated adult would leave a child at age. For purposes of subsection C, that is presumed person, if the person manufactured possesses in any way to the body of the child, or body of any person who controlled the substance, the person's conduct would lead to the proximity and the accessibility of the controlled substance, methamphetamine to the child's analysis, I mean, it's under the health code, section 481.102, jail felony for the child, so on, but... 
there is the Children's Center Inc. And what this does is help helps out spot child endangerment. Could that happen in your area? Take what organization is hoping to help at-risk youth? And it all starts with this sticker. Our Andrew Christensen spoke to that organization to see how they're giving local kids a message that they hope sticks. The Children's Center Inc. places this yellow sticker on businesses like the Crown Jewel here to tell kids if they're ever in any danger like sex trafficking or an abusive household, this is a safe place. Those children could also be having a hard time communicating with their family or need family counseling. Places like the Crown Jewel takes a course that helps them spot the signs of at-risk children. Those signs include grooming or getting services that are too mature for their age. Okay. And if there isn't much interaction between the adult and the child, that could be a Can sign too. Fun? Owner of the Crown Jewel says she's grateful to be Thank educated you. about the signs. There has been some things ever since she did come that's made us be more on our toes with conversations that we're hearing between our clients, actually, um, that has made us think twice. Safe Place businesses will then call the Children's Inc. to help out the at-risk kid. The Children's Center Inc. provides services like a temporary shelter, clothes, and a meal, and even tutoring. You can find a list of businesses that are designated as safe places on the Children's Center Inc.'s Facebook page, which we'll have a link to on our website at ChrisTV.com. Reporting in Corpus Christi, Andrew Christensen, Chris 6 News. Thank you, Andrew. So, endangerment is like child abuse. So how can you spot that? In addition to harm, the mystery of a child under 18 is considered child abuse. So if a child is under 18, with physical abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, symptoms... There are ways. Offer your child love and attention. Don't respond in anger. Think supervision. Know your child's caregivers. Empathize when to say no. Teach your child to stay safe online and reach out. And if you could certainly might abuse your child, you need to seek help immediately. The organization can help the Child Help National Abuse Hotline which we'll call a 1-800-4-8-CHILD. It's 1-800-422-4453. Child Abuse America, it's 1-800-21-CHILDREN. It's 1-800-244-5373. Or you can start by talking to your family, doctor, or health care provider. He or she may help, may offer a referral to a parent education class, counseling, or support group. I recommend uh, that may be for the courts to decide whether you need the parent class or not, but it could. But if you were abused as a child, you need to get counseling to ensure you don't continue this, this cycle again. It's a sin and it's just preventable. And the Children's Center Inc. is going to help out in any way they can. The whole reason for this is just, into, this, this is their, this is what they're doing. And we'll have the Children's Center's Facebook page in the description below so that you can understand. And if you're in Corpus Christi and, and if you want to look up this person, this, not this person, not this place, it's one, it's 1130 Claire Drive, no, bleep, 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 bleep. Just call the hotline number at 884-7361. It's not an emergency number. Case, it's not an emergency number. If it's emergency call, I will, leave. I will leave this on our website and again in the description below. That's at j that's at jgarmy67.wixsite.com slash give me a break. That'd be great. And at on no, Wednesday that day. And coming up on uh, June 16th, there's going to be a, the fundraiser at Pizza Hut. It's about a partner in Saratoga for carryout costs. 50% of the profits donated to Children's Center. Any sale 
it matches the promotion. That's what they're doing. And if you're there, if you want to help out, you can't go there. You can go there to help support. There's one game break when we come back. Have you been trying to buy appliances like dryers and refrigerators? Well, there may be some news for you. It's hard because it's not because of the pandemic. Here's the latest from Inside Edition. Take a look. Sleeping made my anxiety worse. It held me in that sad place. If you're in need of a new appliance, get ready to wait. At this appliance store on Long Island, New York, customers are waiting as long as eight months for certain types of refrigerators, a shortage that doesn't seem to be letting up anytime soon. Not just refrigerators, nationwide there's a shortage of major kitchen and home appliances brought on by pandemic-related manufacturing backups. Have a hole over here, I have a hole over here. At AHC Appliance Store, owner Sandy Tao shows us empty display cases, something that's never occurred in her store before. This has definitely been the most disappointing, unprecedented year that we've ever seen before. A quick tour of her store shows us just what customers are facing. So this is such a nice double oven range here. When, when could I get that? So if you were looking for it specifically in this color, you're looking about December. When are these available? So this one, you're probably looking around December wow. on the dryers. And if you're desperate for an air conditioner this summer, brace yourself. Once we run out, that's it. Um, you will not find new air conditioners. She says appliance production is down 50%, but demand is up 200%. This homeowner was supposed to move into her New Jersey residence next month, but now she can't because of the appliance shortage. This big section over here is supposed to be like double wall oven, fridge freezer, a row of cabinets and sink. Alana Mandel says her appliances are delayed until at least August. It really can impact the entire process and then I can't even move into the house. That's in two months. So if you're looking forward to getting those new appliances like the refrigerator, the dishwasher, the stove, you need to wait months. And it could be a year or it could be months, but don't you worry. You just have to learn to be patient. Patience is virtue. That's the whole thing here. But if you're going to be sitting there waiting with me, throwing tantrums like, look, like a baby, that's probably your choice. But that's not going to help you. That's not going to help you from getting what you want. Okay, let's see what we got here. How about this one? If you've known this, if you know this guy who, who was the man who, who shot Reagan, he's now a songwriter. Take a look. Forty years ago, he went to jail for trying to assassinate then-President Ronald Reagan. Today, John Hinckley is a free man and now going public with his side hustle as a singer. It's John Hinckley belting out love songs on YouTube. In 1981, Hinckley wounded President Ronald Reagan in a failed assassination attempt. He said he did it to win the heart of actress Jodie Foster. 
Hinckley was found not guilty by reason of insanity and spent 35 years in a psychiatric hospital. Now 64, Hinckley has been living with his mother in Virginia. He has posted his love songs anonymously but received almost no views. So Hinckley petitioned a judge to allow him to perform using his name. I create things that are good and like any other artist I would like to profit from it and make money from my art. He got his wish and Hinckley's name is now on his YouTube page where he sings tunes by Elvis. And Bob Dylan. He even performs an original tune, Majesty of Love. This is the majesty of love. I wonder what the families of Ronald Reagan, Jim Brady, what Tim McCarthy, the Secret Service agents who was shot, not to mention Jodie Foster. Lives are changed forever. Yeah. I wonder what they all think about this. Since his release in 2016, Hinckley has been receiving court-ordered mental health treatment. Exactly. So congrats to that assassin who, uh, to the former assassin, I should say, for for all his hard work in becoming a songwriter. And hey, I can learn how to, I can learn how to, I can learn how to be a songwriter too if I can get the inspiration from him. Now to something that I think you may not like. This happened in North Carolina where this he got denied a diploma first. This student was denied a diploma who wore a Mexican flag over a gown. Let me read you a portion of this article. A North Carolina community is under uproar after a graduating senior at the local high school was denied his diploma. According to the witness video shot during the high school's graduation ceremony, the student was wearing a Mexican flag over his groan when he walked across the stage. He received his diploma holder where when he went to retrieve the actual diploma, he was refused and allegedly told he had to apologize. The school states that wearing a flag of any kind was against the state stated dress code for the graduation ceremony. And I'm gonna read you a p I'm gonna read you the uh I'm not gonna I'm gonna read you a portion of the statement. First and foremost, we strongly support our students' expressions with our heritage and appropriate time and place graduation dress codes really share with students ahead of time. The winner of flagging many kinds of violations of the dress code. It allows students to decorate their border and border boards, nod to creativity, students right for the last night. I mean future seniors, so he violated the dress code. I think that was his good punishment. But if he came up here and told his side of the story, saying, Oh, this oh this and that, that that and the other, he really should apologize. Back in a moment. Tomorrow, we're going to tell you what the sheriff said about what happened. He'll tell us his side of the story of what happened. Then, then you're going to meet a guy who went under, who goes undercover catching predators in Corpus Christi. You'll, he'll tell you he'll tell you what he does, and we'll show you the clips. Look for that on Monday. And that's all. This is Game Break Saturday going to Sunday. We'll see you again for Game Break Monday. Have a good night, everyone. I'll see you Monday.